Coach Mike and B here. I want you guys to follow along with me as I do a Muay Thai footwork focus shadow boxing workout, no equipment necessary. Round number one, we're freestyling. Open up the body. That's all you gotta do is just open up the body. That's the main focus currently. We're gonna go six rounds. The first round is freestyling. Things I want you guys to be looking out for. Opening your hips, opening your shoulders, testing, retesting. What, what does that even mean? I'm gonna throw a punch, then I'm gonna feel where I feel there's some stiffness. Right here, I'm throwing elbows. I notice the stiffness and then I open up my arms. Do big circles with the arms. So if you feel real tight in the shoulders after you throw a elbow, throw that elbow over and over again. Just, you know, you don't have to go fast. First, go slow, then steady, then consistent. Then you wanna start opening up the hips. Once the hips open, once you start being able to kick through, and I want emphasis on kicking through. So as you guys step to kick, don't just step forward, step slightly out, open the hips up, then rotate through. If you're throwing your uppercut and notice there's some stiffness there, give me some arm circles, whip them out. Even my mullet is warming up. Yeah, whip out the arms, move the arms around, do some neck rotations. Open the mouth big, get the blood running to the head. Warm the ankles up. I know it's a lot of stuff, but you gotta tap in with your body. Tap in with your body, tap in with your mind. Start to put the big picture together, but we're just prepping our body, warming everything up. Even if your footwork is intricate or it's not intricate, I want you to focus on slow, steady transitions. You don't have to be comparing yourself to me or anybody else. Compare yourself to yourself. Are you in position? Are you balanced? Are you falling over yourself? Do not fall over yourself. Don't neglect areas like hamstrings, ankles, wrists, toes. Warm it all up. A proper warm up, raising that body temperature. It's gonna set everything off on a good note. Kick through both legs. Even if you don't throw ax kicks, having that looseness in the hamstrings is gonna be key. And round one is done. Relax your body. In between, I want you guys to focus on demonstrating powerful posture, emit power, don't appear weak. The only time you wanna appear weak is when you actually are strong. So even if you're tired, don't put your hands on your hips, don't bend over, don't celebrate your fatigue, please. Shake it out, we're about to start the next round. The next round is forward, backwards, left, right, or if you're southpaw, right, left. So lead side, rear side. After I move and I position myself, I'm gonna check. So move forward, backwards, left and right, and start checking. Use those checks as a check for balance. If I can immediately check after I land, that means I'm balanced. If I can't, and I have to play happy feet, and I have to do a bunch of small, tiny readjustments, that costs time. Time costs too much in this game. So even like a millisecond, a fraction of a millisecond is an eternity. If I can cut off the fat on my technique, I can deliver things much faster and I can get to my defense much faster. So focus on cutting the fat, trim that fat, take a step forward. You don't have to literally step forward, backwards, left and right. You can if you want, but make sure that you're not doing too much. If you focus on too much, that's the opposite of what focus is even intended for. You can't focus on everything. So it's through elimination, it's through removing excess, you know, focus that you can practice and isolate, then bring it back into context later. Context later, sorry about that. Purposely, sometimes I cross my feet to check a little bit faster. It's a technique I wouldn't recommend to everybody, 
that I've seen it done at the highest level in the golden era. So don't believe your friends, don't believe your coach, study and believe the film. Make sure when you do check, you are connected to the floor, your hand positioning is clean, you're connecting the arms with the legs, so you're sealing the block. Smooth transitions, so I take that step, I land, let the dust settle, pick that check up. Eventually you're gonna be doing it faster, but speed is not as important as doing it at the right time. So doing it fast and doing it wrong or doing it at the wrong time will actually put you in more danger. Take your time, make sure your, your shoulders are loose so they're still able to be whips. Visualize the impact, remain tense in the core. So when you check, I want you to visualize that person kicking the shit out of your shin. Pow! It lands and you just look at them like, what's up? What's up, bruh? Gotcha. <laughs> so we're practicing the mental side of it as well. Put ourselves visually in what it feels like to block and check and check a fast kick, a kick that visually would scare most people. You visualize remaining strong in those situations. That's why you have to condition your shin by kicking the bag often. Okay, round's over. We've got 30 seconds off. Our next round, we're gonna be circling to the left. We're gonna also be punching and defending kicks. Most people fall off balance when, you know, they, they throw big punches, they overcommit, they overextend. So they are out of position to be able to defend kicks. You do not want to be able, or you, you, you want to be able to defend the kicks immediately after. You always want to stay ready. Always able to address the kicks. So make sure when you throw your punches, you commit, but not sacrifice and not get out of position. So I'm not going to sacrifice great position for slightly more power. Just be precise. You can still generate good whip, good snap. Circle to the left while you punch. Pause, circle, then punch. Punch, punch, kick. Let's go. Don't rush. Please do not rush. We're training our discipline, our ability to be disciplined and stay on one thing. I know you wanna add more stuff. You wanna say, okay, let me add some knees. Let me add some elbows. Let me add more, more, more. Let's isolate first. When you isolate, you actually get to work on the weaknesses. Yeah, punch, pick up the pace. If you wanna be a weapon with pace and you wanna gas people out, make people tired, you have to work on your overall composure, almost like you don't give a shit. Like you're just relaxed, you're calm. No matter what happens, if you win, if you lose, you're just right down the middle. But one thing you do know is you're gonna be over, overcoming and, and, and dominating your emotions the entire time. We have variables that are outside of our control what we want to do is be able to control those. So circling, snap, snap. Visualize snapping that person's head back, busting their nose up. They throw the kick back, you shut it down. Practice dominance. Become comfortable with it. Using your pace, using your pressure. Defending, not being scared. Just addressing it with what you know you need to address it with. If they throw that rear kick, you check. You pull, get out of the way. Once they stop, you can just keep working them using controls. There's always ways to advance it, but try to avoid going to the next step when you haven't reached the step before. Just slowly build up those progressions. If you're just doing one punch, stepping over to the left, landing, and you're in good balance, that's good enough if that's what you are capable of doing. I'd rather see that than, than all the fancy BS, the, the, the decorative kind of flowy bullshit. 10 seconds, let's work, let's work. Commit, but don't 
gas out. Fully commit, fully extend. Ooh. At the end of that round, I chose to sweep the guy's leg out. I imagine and visualize that he did a switch kick and then I just chopped the leg under on some Danny Bill shit. If you haven't heard of Danny Bill, go watch that. So we're almost to the next round. Take your break, rest, grab some water. You can even pause this video, I don't care. You don't even have to do a follow along. You can just write down what you should be working on. Round number four. So we're gonna be circling right and we're gonna be teeping and checking. I'll also allow a little bit more um, level changing here, teep variations, teep distances. Sometimes you have a short stabby teep where you don't really extend your hip too much. And sometimes you have a long teep. You've got your lead teep from Southpaw and Orthodox. You've got your rear teep from both stances. Make sure your hand positioning is in the spot that you want it to be. Nothing on accident. Everything with a purpose. Checking the kicks. Like I said, checks to check balance. Don't move too much. There's, there's, movement is like salt, you know, to a dish. It can make or break it. Not enough movement when it comes to circling to the left and the right, consistently circling. If you don't have any, you're a sitting target. If you have too much, then you're running into shots, which is way worse. You might hear my dog in the background, but we still gonna get this work. We still gonna get this work. Let's go, circle to the right. Keep teeping, do not cross your feet. Every now and then you could, you know, catch and kick going towards the opposite direction, or you can check and then kick going towards the opposite direction. You can pause. You can add a little bit of a speed ups in the movement. You can switch stance. But like I said, keep it on easy mode until you feel like you've dominated each step. Do not transition to the next step before you're ready. You've got controls, you've got feints, you've got weight transfer. These are all the things that you're tapping into. Most people are just throwing punch combinations, punch kick knee combinations that they learned in class, but they're not visualizing them landing. They're not, they're not putting themselves in sparring or fight situations. They're just running through the moves. They're phoning it in. Don't be that person. You can, you can level up really quickly. And like I said, there's going to be times where you can break these rules as you get really good at them. Or as I like to say, bend them. Sometimes I purposely cross my feet. I learned that from a few different golden era style fighters is they'll cross their feet to check faster. So let's say I wanted to use my right leg to check a kick coming towards that direction. I just step across with my left foot and then I can immediately transition to that check as opposed to right foot goes out, left foot goes out and then I check with my right foot. But don't be eager to be at the next level. Be eager to dominate the one you're on. At the end of the day, balance is the most important. All right, that's the end of the round. Beautiful, we're going into the next round. We're gonna be galloping to round kicks. We're also gonna be adding some pivots. Things I want you to think of before this round starts. Keep the feet apart. Sometimes we're gonna add some feints. We're gonna throw from both sides. We're gonna walk into the kicks. We're gonna control, take angles. We're gonna try different variations, you know, so. I want you guys to focus on just having good balance throughout. Gallop to kicking. Yeah, refer to the video to see what I mean. Let's go, gallop, glide through your kick. I'm not jumping up in the air. I'm basically galloping like a horse would forward, using that momentum. And on the very last, the very last gallop, I cut an angle off. So I open up my hip as I land and I fire through. I even push off my rear foot. Nice, every now and then faint. If you wanna practice the golden era style kick, what basically happens is you kick straight up until the very last second where you turn your hip right over and whip across the last 90 to 100%. So that last 10%. 
you whip through. Then you start feeling it. You start feeling that, feeling that flow, adding that sauce, adding that seasoning, putting the flavor packet down. Let's go, let's go. I see you keep working. Stay calm, stay patient. Yes, gallop, kick, kick. Ooh, faint, kick, faint, faint, kick. You can use different feints if you've got different variation, variations of kicks. So different types of feints. We got a minute and a half, let's go. Let's go, let's work. Come on, come on. Add in the pivots, okay? Add some pivots. Visualize controlling your opponent, controlling their lead hand when you pivot out. Framing, pushing off into your kicks. This is where it really becomes beneficial. Taking, taking a different stances, walking into southpaw, going backwards or forwards. Let's go, we got a minute left. Sometimes you could try variations that seem very unorthodox. Hands down, calm, chilling. I wouldn't recommend everything to everyone, but this is a part of the art of the martial arts, the experimentation. Trying to appear weak when you are strong, hands down, a lot of times you get people to mirror you. The mirror neurons, I read that somewhere, I don't know what the fuck that's about. But people sometimes, if you have low hand positioning, they drop their hands just slightly. If you give indications that you're gonna rest, and instead you just go from zero to 100 real quick, that's how you land shots. That's how you, you set up hesitation. That's how you set up the hezzy in basketball, the crossover, ba ba, breaking ankles, baby. You give them to, you get them to bite, and then you hit them with the kick. Very nice, round over, last round. This is where you put all the ingredients in a bowl and you mix it up. This is the round that you wanna be the most free. So we're 15 seconds out, take your break. Breathe, breathe, relax. This is, the this is the fun round, the most fun round. Time to put it all together. Play the game, play the game. Yes, move around, direction shifts, try not to cross your feet. Just change your direction so you're basically walking. Neutral circling. Remove the leg. Be, be very careful when you start to circle each direction because a lot of times a really good striker figures out how to make you meet them. So it's like um, two oncoming cars, head on collision. If one's going 30 miles per hour, the other goes 30, it's a 60 mile per hour car crash or the equivalent to a person driving 60 into a wall. So make sure that you don't run into somebody and make their strikes even more strong. Check the kick. Let's go, switch kick. We're putting it all together. We're finding our flow. Finding our flow, let's go. Get that flick jab going. Get the jabs going, snap the punches. Let's go, mix it all up. Try something new, try something you've never done before. Like I said, it's the fun round. There's no consequences here. Yes, find that flow. Find that flow, find that patience, relaxation. Blend the harmony, the yin and the yang together, let's go. Try to learn how to continuously move in a circle while defending, while attacking. Like continue your momentum from one strike to the next. Transitions. We've got less than a minute and a half left. Very end of this workout. Time to try the jumping stuff. The spinny stuff. The jumping spinny stuff. Time to play. Have fun, man. I know a lot of people are like, hey, do this, do that. This is open. Have fun, bro. Why'd you get into this? It's not purely to just use this as a form of self-defense to be confident, to become the champion. It's also a release. Find that release right now. Flow, relax. Uh, be dangerous, have fun being dangerous. Let's go, come on. We got 35 seconds. 
pick up that pace. Okay, pick up that pace. Continue the breathing. Nothing labored, nothing labored. Just pick up the pace. Stay consistent. Put the pedal down on that gas pedal. Put it down just a little bit. Barely step on the gas pedal. Continuously, you know, just keep gaining speed for this last 10 seconds. We're not going all out. This is not a burnout. We're not going to be out of breath at the end of this. Come on. Come on. Come on. And time. Excellent work. Excellent work. Comment down below if you like this.